This is Todd with Todd's Dodge Garage. We are back here with the 1966 Dodge Charger Barn Find. Uh, we have come quite a long ways. Uh, we've got the car running. Uh, we had to remove a broken bolt from the water pump housing. Uh, that was unexpected, but you roll with the punches. Uh, now we're going to be continuing on with the brake system. Uh, we did post a video last time uh, of changing or converting it over from a single reservoir master cylinder to a dual. Now we're actually going to be working on the brakes themselves. Uh, so I'm going to take you along for the ride, show you what I do and how I do it. Anybody has any suggestions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, let me get all set up and I will uh, bring you back. Okay, here we are. I've gone ahead, obviously, and removed the wheel and the brake drum. Um, kind of boring, you guys didn't need to see me do that. So here's what we have. You know, the, this is a four-wheel drum brake equipped car. Uh, what I like to do first is, even before I take an air gun or anything, blow it off, uh, take brake cleaner, spray everything down, and then I like to take an air gun and just lightly kind of blow everything out. Uh, but I take pictures uh, of everything. Uh, that way, you know, I know how it goes back together, what springs go where. What I also do is I take the other side off uh, as a reference, uh, and I just duplicate it, and I make sure that everything's the same. Uh, you don't know who's been in there doing what, where, when, and if things are correct or not. Uh, so I like to have at least a backup reference, uh, as well as a service manual, but, you know, looking at the other side is a little bit easier and quicker, uh, you know, than flipping through pages of a service manual. Uh, so we're going to get started on this. We are replacing the wheel cylinders as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to crack the lines loose on those. I've been soaking them. Uh, so hopefully, you know, they won't give us too much trouble. Uh, I'll go ahead and start on that and I will be back shortly. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to heat this brake line. I have soaked it and soaked it, and I am going to work it. Um, I'm going to heat it and play with it because ultimately I really don't want to break it at this point. Uh, I actually have a replacement. Um, I bought a complete brake line kit from Inline Tube, so I've got all brand new brake lines. But, you know, I'm, what I want to do is try to show you uh, how you can go about removing these uh, when they seem rusty and like they're just not going to, to come. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've got our torches. Um, we've got a vice grip on it. And we're just going to heat it slightly and keep working it until uh, it breaks loose from the rubber hose. Uh, then I want to make sure... I can get it to spin on the metal line. So then I've got some other tricks for that. Uh, hopefully we don't twist this line, but if we do, we do. We'll just uh, get rid of it and put our other one on. Uh, as I get this going and uh, we get this happening, I'll bring you along. Well, we got it off. So, you know, it can be done with these rusty brake lines. Uh, it just takes, you know, patience and working them back and forth and, you know, just playing with it little by little. Uh, I didn't really care if I broke it or not because uh, I'm replacing the brake lines with new ones. I'm not going to trust 55-year-old brake lines on the car. But I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Uh, not everybody has replacement brake lines. And again, sometimes you got to work with what you have available. And quite often... Uh, you know, things snap off, especially with brake lines and the master cylinders. If you just take your time and you work it and you're patient, uh, patience is the name of the game, a lot of times you can get them off. I'm going to keep going on this and uh, I'll keep bringing you along. All right, we've got the new wheel cylinder installed. Got the new brake line, brake hose hooked up to the new brake line. And this brake line goes to the new junction block that I did a video on uh, that is on the inner frame rail uh, in the same location as the stock brake line. Uh, we're doing a dual master cylinder conversion on this car, uh, but we are looking good right now. So far, we've got kind of the hard stuff done, if you will. You know, working with brake lines and hoses is never fun. We're going to go ahead and keep reassembling uh, this wheel, and I will bring you along. Okay, we've got the uh, driver's side front done and reassembled. 
There's a couple key points to remember that the very front pin is longer than the rear pin. So when you buy your new hardware kit, make sure you lay it out and a longer pin goes to the front, shorter pin to the rear, or else you're gonna have one heck of a time getting uh, the new spring on. Also, uh, there is a left and a right uh, wheel adjuster or a star wheel. Um, you wanna make sure you get those on in the right configuration so that as the brake lever actuates, it is actually uh, doing something. Otherwise, if you have this the uh, right on the left and vice versa, this won't be doing anything at all. Actually, it'll be winding it in. Um, so, you know, the springs are color-coded. Uh, the white is on the bottom. Yellow and black. Uh, we were able to reuse the old brake cable and the cable guide. Uh, also make sure you put some brake grease. I don't know if you can see it in there, but put some brake grease on the pads. Make sure you clean up the backing plate, put some brake grease on the contact pads. That way the shoes will slide nice and freely. Uh, I've got my new wheel cylinders in, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust up this brake, the brake drum. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all four and then we're gonna bleed the brakes. Uh, don't worry, I'll be bringing you along. If there's any questions uh, along the way, you know, put them in the comments and I will uh, try to get to them as soon as I can. All right, we'll bring you along, hang on. Well, we're back. All right, we have got the passenger side done. Uh, new brake hose. Now this brake line, uh, I didn't film this, but this took about two hours to uh, feed uh, up against the firewall, all the way back over. There it is there. And it is this line here, comes in to this junction block. This is the new junction block. And we had to feed that. It was a pre-bent line from inline tube. And that was quite a process. Uh, so, we got that done and then we went ahead and uh, replaced the brakes. Remember that in this one, the rear pin is longer than the front pin. Um, so it's the primary shoe is always to the rear and the primary shoe has um, the longest uh, material. And it is a little bit thicker, uh, the plate, the way that they have it. So the longer, uh, the longer stud in this case goes to the back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the drum on and adjust it. And then we are going to wrap up for the night. We will see you shortly. Well, this has been a fun adventure today. We, uh, we came out. We got the broken stud out of water pump housing um, we got the front brakes done that is fantastic uh, tomorrow when I come out I'm going to be doing the rear brakes that should be easy compared to the front uh, I won't be having to run any ridiculous brake lines against firewalls uh, with an engine and transmission in the car uh, let me tell you that was a lot of fun about two hours worth of that uh, but we're all we're all set to go here um, you know, again, I do this for fun, and it's, uh, you know, I'm by no means an expert. Uh, this is just stuff I've learned along the way. I like to show it as I do it. Uh, if you like what you see, you know, please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Todd with Todd's Dodge Garage. Until next time, we'll see you later.